virus is something that is so small. Can you imagine someone on the planet has done something not right, very, very small, with a food habit that triggered something that now people can die. Do you know how small is a virus? It is so small that we cannot see it. How can something so small can be so powerful? This is very, very interesting and very profound to think about that in terms of symbolic language. What is the meaning for humanity of what is happening right now in the world? This is interesting to make the comparison of something very small, like an argument between two persons or in a couple. A small argument can eventually create a tsunami and create a separation. Then eventually the life that the couple has created can change totally just because a small argument, something small that we have heard that created something inside that broke our heart you see, this is a very profound lesson for humanity to understand that we are all interconnected. This could have happened in other countries, in other food markets in the world, or in a house where someone could have mixed bait. And, and, a, and a snake and raw, you know, animals, etc., create that virus. This is why it is very important to understand that this is a world concern. This is not just something about one country. And I think it's time for humanity to develop its compassion and this notion of empathy. This is happening and helping humanity to improve themselves, to improve themselves with hygiene, with many things. But this is not just concerning food, friends. This is also concerning the way we think, the way we are inside. We, know, we need to know now that a very small thing in life, something so small, can create many problems. And in life, everything starts with something small. Everything. It is a law in nature. It's always the beginning of something that grows progressively. Anger is the same. When someone is angry, when someone will commit a murder, for example, a crime, the crime doesn't come up like this. It took time. It started most of the time when the person was very young, by the way she was raised, by the frustrations that the person has accumulated, that created eventually powerful anger, jealousy, envy, that created devastation, moment 
in the life of the person. So today we will open uh, a subject that I know is very sensitive and very troubling also. And we have a lot of people now online from all around the world that are thinking about that. And hopefully this webinar will help you to understand another level of comprehension. Instead of just panicking, instead of just like focusing on the fear, we should focus on what we need to learn as humanity. Can we improve ourselves? And not just on the concrete level, not just on the food habit, much more than that. We need to understand that we are one planet. We are one world, all together. Whatever, whatever the, the color of our skin, we are all brothers and sisters from one planet. We are helping each other all the time now with trade. When we go to a store, when I go to a store in Canada or Switzerland, I see products from all around the world. And often one product can be made of so many, you know, people from so many countries that have participated to make this product. We live in a time that is amazing at the same time. But we will need to understand that. We need to improve life. We need to improve also many aspects to bring the best of this humanity together. So I would like to welcome you wherever you are all around the world uh, to this webinar and this special edition on the coronavirus. I want to share also something that is quite important. Yes, this virus is very serious. It is, it is serious. And it is important that the governments of all countries are securing and making the right steps to, to, make, to make sure that this virus will not grow bigger and in a way that it will affect the entire population of the world. But at the same time, doctors are explaining that, yes, it is very serious, but it is a virus that is deadly for sure. And this is very tragic. But this virus will not, you know, kill the entire population of the world. This is not uh, an epidemic that will not be controlled eventually. This is a lesson, this is a step also. Maybe in the future, a stronger virus will come. This one is mostly touching people that are uh, fragile. And of course, we need also to bring this in perspective because there's so much things on internet, so much panic also. We need to understand that. This, this virus is not, you know, something that everyone will get. And also, it is a small percentage right now that is happening. And now it begins to stabilize because of the governments of many countries and also the government of China that has done things to really, really uh, uh, making sure that uh, this will be contained as soon as possible. Last year only, 
more than 40,000 to 80,000 people have died from the flu. And this is something that you see almost every year. So this is important to understand. Now we are at about 1,000 people. And of course, many people have been contaminated. But it doesn't mean that you die when you are contaminated. It's a strong, of course, a pneumonia. It's very, very, we don't wish this to anybody. But from those who are infected, a very small percentage, around 3 to 5%, can die from this. Among those who have the virus, a very, very small percentage, normally those who are fragile, the elders that can be already sick, etc., or those who are uh, very, very, very young. And it is a small percentage. That is why we need to be careful not to emotionally, you know, overreact on this aspect and create a panic. And also, this is interesting because Sometimes we see therapists or, uh, or spiritual people, and it is very special. It's like they are happy that something is happening like this, or extremist uh, religious person. They're using this by saying, oh, yeah, you see, you know, we all going to die, and then God will save us, and will save only those who are, you know, pure and whatever, things like that. And it is sometimes subtle. The therapist is just like feeling more important because there's a virus and feeling like, okay, we need to protect ourselves and I need to protect my family, etc. And then overreact. How can we be happy when something like this is happening? We need compassion, we need empathy, we need action also. For me, as a spiritual person, I always want to marry spirit and matter. I don't walk on the path of extremism or apocalyptic vision. Science is something also that we need to understand that is very important and has also a lot of knowledge and this knowledge is amazing and profound and needs to continue to improve. We need not to reject traditional medicine. We need to understand it is important. Like people sometimes, they will be also extreme about vaccine. Very extreme, thinking that pharmaceutical company will do a vaccine to control humanity and all kinds of things like that that we can we can read on internet that are exaggerating that are thinking that everybody is wrong all pharmaceutical companies are wrong no no there's always people that are not right and company that are not right it has always existed and it will always exist we should never think like that and if there's a problem, then the police is there and, you know, the government will, will, will stop eventually things. And, and even if, if it's not perfect yet, it will continue to improve. And humanity has a lesson now. Another lesson, actually, to understand that we are all interconnected. And we need to help each other, not to reject each other. It's the same thing with terrorism. You know, it's a small proportions of people that are doing that. It's not, it's not an entire country or it's not just the Muslim that are doing this. There are great Muslims in this world. Like there are great Buddhists and there are great Christians and there are great, there are great people everywhere in all religions and all philosophies. We should never tag people, the community. We should think, you know, with a large perspective. 
with compassion and to understand that when people are having criminal activities, of course, normally these people, sooner or later, they will find, you know, justice. I believe that. Not if, and if it's not in this life, it will be in the next. But sooner or later, whatever happens, there's always, there's always a cause and a consequences. And these consequences are there for us to learn. We need one day to understand something. Very important. It's a law in the universe. Evil is education. We should not fight evil. We should educate evil. We should transform evil. Of course, we need to stop evil, but we, we should understand that, like with this virus, what should we do? We need to study, we need to make research. And I can tell you that, you know, many labs on the planet and, and, and doctors are working around the clock right now to try to find a solution. So as spiritual people, when we are therapists, we should learn to have a global vision of something and not to use a tragic events to create fears in the population or to feel important. This is really, you know, against any humanity principle to think like that. We cannot be happy when something is like this. We should interiorize. We should have compassion, empathy for those who are suffering. Sometimes we are alone in our circles of friends and meditators' friends, and, and we have, you know, this that is happening in the world. And then we think, wow, people should meditate. They don't meditate enough. So we are better than others and we compare ourselves from north to south and east to west. No, we are one humanity. We are one world. We need to be together now more and more. And we will study together all the different epidemics that happen in the world. In this webinar, you will see. And every time, do you know what happened after? There's always been a step of evolution. Evil is educational. Negativity brings positivity, solutions, improvement. The world has improved every time it went through something difficult in history. All the time. Sometimes we forget history, and yes, we repeat in the same pattern. That is true. We can see that. But at least it is always a little more better. So this is important to see this tragedy that is happening as a lesson. And we should bring this symbolically to an understanding of ourselves. When I have a small negative thought, this can be very powerful. When I have something in my heart that is not right, should I keep it this way? Or should I wait to be unhappy and alone in life? Or to have lack of love? Or to make hate grows in me? Is it? What should I do? Remember, friends, a small thing can create a big thing. So let's start to study now uh, and to travel in history. The coronavirus, what is a virus? A virus is an infectious agent that requires a host often a cell whose metabolism and constituents uh, it uses to replicate. 
The name virus is borrowed from the Latin urus, which is related to fuck, jaw, juice, mood, venom, poison, bad smell, infection. Viruses change shape during their cycle. They go through two stages. And let me stop there. And let put this in terms of metaphysics understanding, symbolic language. When someone is not nice with you, through the law of resonance, which is a law in physics that creates a connection with another person, someone is not nice with you, so you receive a form of virus, a small thing, an energy, and then you receive it inside, and then this makes you unhappy, and you start to react, and you start to create mutation to this small negative energy, this small virus you have received, and then suddenly you start to change. You modify yourself, and it starts to grow in you. Mm. Many humans are not even capable of doing alchemy with negative things that are coming in their life. We should become, in a way, like a scientist. When there's a problem, we don't cry. We start to do action to find a solution. But if we react negatively to something that is like being projected to us, then we increase the negative vibration and we participate to spread this virus to our thoughts and emotions and we can eventually project them onto other persons. And we can, for example, we arrive from work, something happened, that created, you know, sadness in you or frustration. And then when you arrive home, you transfer that frustration to your wife or to your husband by not being polite, by not being respectful. This is amazing to understand that we have also viruses within ourselves. Actually, even physically, we have all of them. We are like planet. We have billions and billions of neurons, but we also have lots of infectious agents. And this is why the coronavirus has been created by a mutation from something that a person has eaten that was not proper to eat. This created a mix of animals and humans and eventually created a virus. That is now a tragedy for many, many families. And I have a lot of compassion for the city of, of Wuhan in China. My heart is with them. And I'm, I'm thinking about this as you know, everything that they are going through. And I have seen them on a video being isolated, you know, following the rules because we need to do this. Quarantine is the only way. It is the only way. We will study the epidemics that happen through history. We need to, you know, isolate and make sure we finish, we complete the main cycle, and then we treat people and then eventually this can go away. But have you seen this video where they are singing beautiful things to encourage themselves through the windows? I was so touched when I have when I've heard this from these people. I was so touched. It was very beautiful also what they were singing. I'm sure it's not easy to be in a city like this right now. Not easy, definitely. And this is why we need compassion, not to fear, 
most of the time you will never have any problems. The percentage that you can be infected is so small, you have no idea. It is so small right now, so small. But this is why sometimes humans, we exaggerate things. And we have all these news on the web, you know, that circulates, that can say so many things. And using this also free fears and to, to say bad things about governments or this or that. And we always see like, uh, you know, uh, a problem and a manipulation everywhere, you know. No one wants this, you know, do you know that? No, then no government wants to have this problem. This is not a game, you know. Of course, maybe one day there's going to be a bad person or a terrorist or someone very, very negative that will start to do evil things like this. And this is why the police <laughs> has a, a major work to do in our society. Even if they are not perfect all the time, we need justice. It's an experimentation for humans. And the justice needs to be improved everywhere in all countries. And this is a process also. This is a process. So viruses change shape during their cycle. Exactly the same like when we are not happy. Something happened in our life. Family member said something. Whatever, small things happen. Then we go with this. We take this in us. Ha, 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 ha. We are not happy. Then we go with this along the way and with time to make it grow. And we can even react eventually. And this is what we can see often in couples. You know, when, when you have an argument, a strong argument, in a couple that normally this argument is just the tip of the iceberg. It started sometimes three years ago. When you start to have problems in your couple, the virus started a long time ago with something that you didn't do at the beginning. And you should have react when the love was strong. You should have react right at the beginning. You have waited too long. This is why we need to use this in schools. We, we need to use an understanding that a virus is, is not just something that is related to health. It's related also to thoughts. It's related also to emotions and to our action. We even use virus for computer system. When you have a virus in a computer system, then your entire computer doesn't work. And you start, it, it starts to do strong, strange things. It is the same thing for a human. When you have a virus inside because you have, re you have received something, an agent, <laughs> an infectious agent, an infection agent that came inside you, and then eventually, you know, you became the host of this, and then you started to multiply this. Hmm. <coughs> this is very profound to understand this aspect. So, <coughs> viruses change shape during their cycle. They go through two stages. The extracellular form, in this form, viruses are particulate infectious objects made up of at least one nucleic acid often embedded in a protein capsid. The intracellular form, virus integrated in dormant form, are actively diverting the cellular machinery in favor of its replication. Inside the host cell, viruses are genetic elements that can replicate by parasitizing all uh, or part of the metabolism of the whole cell, whether integrated into a chromosome of the whole genome or parallel to it. 
So this is interesting to understand that. And have you watched the news this morning? This is interesting that a movie from South uh, Korea called Parasite has won many, many Oscar last night. This is very interesting also. Do you see the connection? One thing leads to another. They have won. They have won this award. Of course, it's a very interesting, you know, movie and concept also of, of someone that will forge papers uh, to eventually uh, become, you know, or to have access to uh, to money and power, etc. And then all kinds of things happens, you know. But this is also interesting to understand parasite this notions of uh, of uh, of the problems of the world that are now more and more like studied in many kind of form understanding that a small thing can create a problem so deadly diseases epidemics throughout history in 430 bc smallpox is caused by the variola virus, which spreads through skin to skin, contact or contact with bodily fluids. It can also be spread through the air. In 430 BC, smallpox killed more than 30,000 people in Athens, Greece, reducing the city's population by at least 20%. In 541 AD, the plague of uh, Justinian, which began in 541 and continued on and off for nearly 200 years, killed 50 million people in the Middle East, Asia, and the Mediterranean basin, according to some estimates. The plague is caused by bacteria that are spread by rats that were bitten by infected fleas. This is special. Have you have you ever thought about that? That, and you will see. We will study different epidemic. Always starts with animal. Combination of animals and humanity. This is why we have sometimes, as humans, animals' behavior. We are aggressive. We are we are sometimes very selfish. Of course, the positive aspects of animals in symbolic language exist. All animals, even a rat, can have a job to do, transform and to recycle many things. There's always the plus and the minus in everything with symbolic language and dream interpretation, which we can study signs. That's what we do now. We study signs interpretation. We understand that, you know, that symbolic language explains that everything in life also is a learning so in a dream we see ourselves through different aspects we can even see a dream with a lion we can see a dream with uh, with a giraffe many dreams can use different form of symbol but every symbol will have their special character the lion is related to authority to power even governments will use Lions sometimes as form of statue in their flags or, you know, has a symbol or in, in front of an official building. You don't use frogs. Have you ever imagined to put two frogs in front of a, a, a government building? You know, it doesn't fit because of the character of the lion, which is an animal that is very social linked to power the lion is always resting and preparing always checking to protect you know uh, you know the, the the tribes of lions etc so this is very interesting symbolic language is part of our life and it's not just in dreams it's also in real life you know? so so um, uh, so this 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 understanding that through time and through history we have learned from each steps 
that happened. And it created uh, this notions of improvement, you know, in, in our food habits, et cetera, et cetera. Even if it's not perfect today, it is way better than it was a long time ago. Of course, we need some improvement. We need to put more regulations. And now we have superficial food, <laughs> which we didn't have in the past. But this is changing. Organic is now the top, you know, uh, criteria now for many, many people, even if it's sometimes too expensive for certain people, the entire population of the world now knows that organic is better. This is a big step. Eventually, organic will have more possibilities, so prices will be better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, evolution will, will make some change also in the process of, uh, you know, the learning steps of humanity. But the problems are always related because we have not transcended our animal's behavior. A person can think like an animal sometimes. You know, a person, you know, can be like a shark in business. We hear this sometimes, this expression. So the shark is emotionally very powerful and he's a predator. So emotionally speaking, of course, you do business, you follow the rules of business, if you follow them, but at the same time, you have a shark energy. And then with this, you attack others, and you are very powerful with this negative forces inside. So we can say that someone has a snake energy, you know, because he has no emotion. We can say someone is like a bear, because he's eating, you know, in, in a in a rude way, and he's not refined, etc. We can say someone is like a, a, a rabbit because uh, sexuality of rabbits are quite uh, intense. They multiply themselves quite fast. This is why you have the Playboy magazine, and Playboy has used the symbol of the rabbit. This is amazing to understand symbolic language, to understand that. You know, we use this all the time. It's interesting that you give a teddy bear to a child. You know why? Because this helps symbolically to help the child to begin to have more refinement. Because when he's very small, he's eating like this, rah, 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 and he has, you know, he spread out <laughs> the compote all over his face or the chocolate cake. So, so. This is important to understand that humans have to transcend their animality. And we should think about ourselves and say, do I have animal behavior sometimes? How do I act when I'm very hungry? You know, let's say you're at home with your wife or with your husband and the kids and you're very hungry. Uh, are you, ha you going to be always nice or are you going to rush? You know, and say, oh, wow, you know, blah, blah. it doesn't mean you're going to be, of course, a bear <laughs> with, you know, like eating everybody. But in your attitude, are you capable of mastering just the fact that you have not eaten for four hours? You see, sometimes animals' energies can be in us. And when we have no hygiene, et cetera, because most of the time, you know, when humans have not good hygiene and things like that, or not right morality, et cetera, then problems emerge. Problems emerge. Even the poor, the poor sometimes, you know, they are poor people, that they are great people, and they, have, they are going through difficulties. And if they, you know, really focus and try to do their best, eventually they can have a way out. But they are poor people that they are poor inside. They are poor in their mind. And the, way, the place they live, where they live, is sometimes dirty, very dirty. They, you know, they live like sometimes animals because inside they are poor. When you're not poor inside, you can change your destiny. You can modify. That's why sometimes in a poor family, 
there's one that is more intelligent and he's going to be like making you know you know uh, uh, strong uh, uh, steps in his life and eventually he can he can succeed but through history poor people some poor people have became president of country we see this now more and more around the world this is interesting to understand this so when we and we can be very rich and we can be poor inside not because we are rich that we are a good person that's interesting to understand that so in 1334 uh, what's known now as the great plague of london actually started in china in 1334 and spread along trade routes wiping out entire towns florence italy lost a third of its 90,000 residents in the first six months overall europe lost 25 million people in 1519 there were approximately 25 million people living in what is now called mexico when hernando cortez arrived in 1519 a smallpox epidemic killed between five and eight million of the native population in the following two years over the next century less than two million would survive this and other uh, communicable uh, diseases brought by European explorers. 1633, smallpox reached Massachusetts. In 1633, brought by settlers from France, Great Britain, and the Netherlands. It quickly spread to the Native American population, which had up until now been free of this communicable, communicable disease. It's unclear how many were killed by smallpox through historians estimate some 20 million may have died after the Europeans landed. 1793, Philadelphia was struck with a yellow fever epidemic in 1793 that killed a tenth of the city's 45,000 person population. In 1860, the modern plague began in the, in the 1860s and killed more than 12 million people in China, India, and Hong Kong. It wasn't until the 1990s that people figured out how the bacterial infection was being spread and a vaccine was created. 1910, the largest plague outbreak in the 20th century occurred in uh, Manchuria uh, between 1910 and 1911. Approximately 60,000 people died. Plague still occasionally caused uh, smaller outbreaks in parts of sub uh, Sahara, Saharan Africa. 1918, the great flu pandemic of, uh, of uh, the 1918 and, and 19 is estimated to have killed between 30 million and 50 million people worldwide. Among them were 675,000 Americans. 1952, polio peaked in the US. Nearly 60,000 children were infected and more than 3,000 died. Three years later, vaccination began to prevent the communicable disease. 1984, uh, scientists identified the human uh, humanodeficiency virus or HIV as the cause of AIDS. That, that same year, the deadly disease killed more than 5,500 people in the United States, today more than 35 million people around the world while living with an HIV infection. More than 25 million people have died of AIDS since the first cases were reported. And all these diseases, all of them, were mixed with animals and humans. All of them, 2003, severe acute respiratory syndrome, better known as SARS, was first identified in 2003 in China, I thought the first case in, is believed to have occurred in November 2002. By July, more than 8,000 cases 
and 774 deaths have been reported. And this is interesting to understand that before any form of government starts to react to something, at the beginning, you don't know what's going to happen. It is when it starts to multiply and, and then we need to study, of course, the virus. We don't know. Is it a strong virus? Is it something that the, the system will be eventually capable uh, you know, to handle, to transform? Because there's a lot of virus everywhere. You, know? you have to understand that. So science has also to improve and learn from this. Sometimes we say, I've, I've read this, uh, that, uh, that in China, they have waited too long and this and that. They, you know, they have not waited that long. You know, I can see a lot of reaction now in China, to, to be honest. It's quite, it's quite extraordinary, the measures that they are taking. And it is what has to be done. It is true. It has to be done like that. You know, th this, is, this is very important, you know, to, to understand that. Governments need to act. They have no choice to, to, to react. And it's part of the process of their work. But sometimes, you know, you read this on internet and maybe they have waited a, a few weeks, but is it, you know, put yourself in their shoes. And, and, I, and I'm not saying China is better than the U.S. or, or the U.S. is better than France or, or Japan. No, no, no. I'm talking globally. For me, a government, any form of government, there's always plus and minuses from all countries. You know, all countries have their problems and have their steps of evolution to do. I see this more globally. I, I never try to, you know, like uh, say it's, it's because of this, because of that. For me, I see this as the large picture of evolution. And this is important to understand that aspect. And to be honest, the way that the Chinese has reacted is right. You know, they needed to take, you know, strong measures. And they are not shy now to take strong measures. They are doing, you know, what has to be done. And it is normal. It has to be done. Any other countries would, would have needed to do this. And to be honest, sometimes in other countries, there will be, you know, there will be maybe even more problems. Because, because in Asia, Asian countries, the good aspects of Asian countries, they have more a collective mentality that is now implemented the understanding of, of not by everybody, of course, there are people that they are very individualistic, you know, everywhere. But <clears throat> we have this because, because these countries went through different phases. And now, you know, if we go back in time, you know, there was a lot of difficulties and poverty. So the success of the Asian countries are because they have gathered together. They have gathered together and they have <clears throat> and, they, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and they have emerged from this. <clears throat> and they have emerged from this, which is amazing and great and wonderful. We live, we live a period of time where now, humanity is about to grow from everywhere. Even countries in Africa uh, are helped by, by China and by many countries now. You know, so there's a lot of things happening all around the world. And you will see one day more and more countries will have one day their own economy, their own power. They will develop like something that will become more like a unity. It will take time, yes, definitely, but it is coming. You know, many more countries than it used to be in the past have industrial capacities now. And of course, we need to bring industry the right way with env environmental rules more and more. We need to improve the structures of, of, of companies, etc. Yes, definitely. We need to think also in terms of improvement and in terms like that in history and in time, it takes time. 
change things, it takes time to improve things. So in 2009, the global H1N1 flu pandemic may have killed as many as 575,000 people uh, thought only 18,500 uh, deaths were confirmed. The H1N1 virus is a type of uh, swin flu, which is a respiratory disease of, uh, really of pigs caused by the type A influenza virus. Again, related to animals, humans need to work on their animality in terms of behaviors, in terms of patterns, in, th in terms of abusing of others also sometimes, you know? Poor people can abuse of others and rich people can abuse of others. It's, it's, it's not about being rich or poor. It's about who we are inside. It's about the qualities we need to develop. And this is why in schools, we need to improve the EQ. We need to improve emotional intelligence where we, we develop compassion, empathy, understanding in the multidimensional levels, who we are as humans. We're not just there to make money and we're there to be happy. And we need to be right to be happy because if we are only ourselves to be happy, we're not totally happy. We need to be happy and create structures in life and countries that will create happiness for everybody. And then it's amazing, the change that can be done over a few generations. Yes, definitely. But we need to teach to the, the children. We need to help them to improve themselves. And, and this is very important. And this is why our foundation, we have an amazing program for children called the Plus Minus Code School Program. This is so important, this program. Now, many, many schools around the world are now taking this program and they have amazing results for scores, for the change of the ambience in the schools, et cetera, because we teach the children to think in a multidimensional perception. You see, this is the way that I could have done a plus minus code uh, program in a school. I would have explained that viruses are not just outside. They can be also inside of us. When we have a negative thought, a small thought, it can create many problems. You see, the relationship with everything that exists outside related to inside. This is emotional intelligence. This is uh, the, the way that humans need to improve their capacity to deal with situation and understand themselves and the world. 2010, an epidemic of cholera killed at least 10,000 people in Haiti. In 2010, following a deadly earthquake that paralyzed the nation, the outbreak hampered efforts to rebuild the United Nations with a later apologize for initially denying claims that Nepalese peacekeepers brought the deadly disease to the country following the earthquake. So 2012, approximately 122,000 people worldwide died from the misless, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, a highly contagious disease caused by a virus. Typhoid fever kills around 200,000 16 people a year. Tuberculosis, an infectious bacterial disease, killed an estimated of 1.3 million in 2012. You see, this is just about this is just about eight years ago. And now we have not even 1,000 people that have died from this virus. We have forgotten what happened in the past. And this is, you know, good because governments, because of that, will change, will put food markets, regulations, you know, certain animals are not proper for consum consum consumption. We need to improve also by education, through education. This is how we can change. We need to change the mentalities because one person created that. Can you imagine? One person created that. And it's the same thing for every disease. It started somewhere. 
somewhere very small, one action from one person, then eventually started to create a virus. And the human was the host. The human was the host, received this from the animal, and then who started to be sick, and then who started to spread out through air, through through trans, you know, through uh, uh, transpirations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. through fluids. 2014 epidemic of Ebola, hemorrhagic fever in West Africa was the largest Ebola outbreak on record. The virus killed more than 11,300 people before it was declared over uh, uh, 2016. The World Health Organization declared a public health emergency in 2016 of international concern over Zika virus, predicting three to four million would be infected within a year as it was spreading ex explosively throughout the Americas. Zika is the first mosquito-borne disease to cause a bird defect. The, the devastating bird defect is a microcephaly. The virus is also associated with miscarriage, stillbirth, and other neurological deficits, while not deadly in the way other epidemics are. There is a big impact on future generation when, when fewer children are born because parents are afraid of the virus. So this again, when we heard about this, there was a lot of things going on. I remember my daughter, Kesara, was pregnant of Asia and, and uh, my granddaughter, but she's now two years old. And we were traveling around the world for, for our missions of our foundations. We didn't stop to travel. I'm, I'm leaving for Asia next week, you know, for, for almost two months to, for, for missions that I will do this, that I will go there with, with my wife, Christiane. I'm not going to stop to go there because there's 0.0003% of chances that I get the coronavirus. You see, we need to stop to exaggerate sometimes. And of course, we need to take this virus seriously, definitely. We need to take measures, et cetera, et cetera. And if one day there's a major virus that can, that can freeze the world that they will need to stay in their home for one month, then we will need to do this and follow the rules, of course. You know, if something happens, I'm not saying this virus, you know, once I reach Asia, maybe something will happen. I will follow the natural movement, of course, you know. But at the same time, we need to be logic and see this, you know, not in, in, a, in a way where we, we panic or we exaggerate things. We stop to live our life. Because there are people right now, they are so afraid for their children and this and that and this. You know, just look at the numbers, at the facts. Make sure that emotionally you don't overreact. The chance that your child can take this virus right now is so small, so small. It doesn't mean schools doesn't need to take measures and things like that. It's okay, you know, for a while. So this way we see what's going to happen. This is a good reaction. Governments need to be in control of the situation, definitely. I'm not saying it's not right to do this and then suddenly we need to go to Yuan in China just to say hello. No, no, we need you know, to understand this is a serious virus and it has to be, uh, it has to be uh, understood properly. What does the name coronavirus mean? And let's analyze this with symbolic language. The name uh, coronavirus comes from the Latin corona and virus, literally crown virus. The term coronavirus comes from the appearance of a virus under the microscope characterized by a fringe of large uh, protuberances uh, surrounding the envelope with, uh, with the appearance of a crown by analogy with the solar Corona. This is interesting. And how come the universe and humans have chosen this name? So 
the crown it's related to a crown so the negative aspects of a crown because it's a virus of course the negative aspects of a crown is sometimes people are focusing too much on themselves and this is interesting right at the beginning this virus and we will study this together comes this is what uh, uh, doctors have been in, in, in the first results that have that are now accessible explains that this virus comes from bait you know and uh, and uh, and snake a bait is a mouse you know? it's like a mouse that will fly and this is an animal that is always in the dark stays in the dark so, and a mouse symbolically is related to insecurity. So, and it is flying. So, in symbolic language, you have fire that represents energy, air, the world of thought, water, emotion, and hurt, the world of action. So, a mouse that is flying is on the negative aspect, is related to a lot of insecurity. And the snake is related to a symbol of power also. The notions of having a lot of strength and a cold blood, you know, it's a cold blood animal also. So it's related to not having any emotions at all. Having a snake mentality is only, you know, you're ready to do anything to have what you want. And the snake is related symbolically to the masculine energy. So, uh, uh, so, so the 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 not the bait but the bat. Thank you. Yeah, bat like Batman. <laughs> so, so the bat is like uh, when when we understand this animal as a mouse that is flying, and a snake that is a symbol of power related to the masculine energy. We can understand the combination of this. You know. Because, and even these people, the fact that they are eating raw snake and raw bat and things like that, and they mix this, you know what they want unconsciously. They want, and this is often related to tradition, where if you eat snake, if you eat this, you will have the strength of the snake. You will become strong. You will have a lot of power. And, and you know, and, and the... And the, the bat, you will become Batman. <laughs> you will become like, a, you know, like a, 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 a having, you know, a, a strong thoughts that, you know, that et cetera, that can, you know, go everywhere and, and this, and nobody knows this because you have like uh, thoughts in the back of your mind, intentions that you don't know, but it's all related to survival. Survival's energy, people that have this kind of attitude that can eventually go in this and do this and eventually mix things that are not healthy. So let's take now our intermissions. We will take an intermissions of five minutes and we come back after to continue uh, our analysis of the coronavirus in our special edition for this webinar today.
So let's continue now uh, our webinar and our special edition on the coronavirus. So depending on the species, these viruses naturally infect mammals or birds. Seven types of coronavirus can infect humans. The coronavirus mainly infects the upper digestive and, and respiratory tracts in mammals and birds. Uh, origin of the virus, it is now considered very likely to be a virus of animal origin. Researchers at the Shanghai Pasteur Institute believe it has an ancestor in bats, while a Chinese team has indicated that the 2019 NCOV is a recombination of a bat coronavirus and a snake coronavirus. So uh, the presence of this new virus, as you know, has been detected for the first time in Yuan, China's sixth largest uh, city and population of 11 million people. And this is important. Please, please, please stop to stigmatize China. You know, there's great things in China. Always the plus and the minus of all countries. And this is happening there. And we should have uh, it started there in a market there. It could have started in Vietnam. It could have started in Bangladesh, in India. It could have started in Japan. It could have started in America. It could have started everywhere in the kitchen of somewhere where you decide to eat and mix, you know, like a, a raw animal, you know, like a snake and a bat, etc. So please, 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 please. Of course, in certain countries, there are certain food habits that are more likely to create this. It's true. And the Chinese government has reacted and there will be new laws, new regulations and changes because ancient tradition sometimes keeps certain food habits alive. And, and even if you put certain rules in place, it takes often a long time, especially when it takes food habits. It takes a long time before we start to change and accept this in the entire population, and especially in the poor people where their tradition is linked to the way they eat. So the link seems to have been made by the Chinese authorities with a large market in the city, the UNN Seafood Wholesale Market, where many fresh animal meats are sold daily and illegally. A list of products mentioned as rat, fox, snakes, or camel meat, among others. The market was closed by the authorities on January 1st. Um, the current situation, uh, uh, as of January 31st, because it has changed, we are now, I think, around uh, 40, uh, 31,000 or 40,000 nearly 1,000 uh, dead confirmed. And uh, so on January 31st, 20, uh, so the death toll rose to uh, around uh, 10,000 cases of contamination with China recording 213 deaths. So you see in just a few days, this is an epidemic. It is truly an epidemic. It's going gradually and it grows. And this is why all governments need to take action and proper action to minimize, uh, you know, what can happen. Like, you know, the SARS was also, you know, uh, a, few, uh, a few months and years back, uh, a, a strong uh, situation. And the humanity has succeeded to, 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 uh, to turn the page of this and to control this. And for sure, this new virus, of course, I'm not saying, you know, there, there will not be 50,000 deaths in, in a few months from now. I don't want to announce anything, any numbers about that. It is a serious virus, but at the same time, remember friends, we should not panic. We should not panic and we just follow, you know, the right procedure, normal, natural procedure that should be done, of course, to improve uh, you know uh, the conditions of of uh, of uh, of uh, our life and and uh, what you know is about because the, the main uh, the main now problem is based in china 
In other countries, you have a few cases of death and many people are healing from this virus without cure. You know, the system succeed to, you know, to, to manage it. It's not because you get the virus that you're going to die. It's three to five percent. Of course, I don't want, you know, to to and, and wish this to anybody, of course, because it's a very strong flu and pneumonia is quite intense. Of course, reported symptoms that roughly resemble seasonal flu include fever, fatigue, dry, a cough, a shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, pneumonia, kidney failure, and death in severe case. In severe cases, you know, please, 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 three to five percent, you know, uh, of those who are infected. You know, this is not, you know, uh, this is not like everybody. You, we can we can heal from this. So, so and eventually, yes, there's going to be a vaccine. Definitely, they will find something. Yes. What I want to share with this special edition of our webinar. It is we need to improve ourselves. As humans in food habits, in, in thought process emotion process. I want humanity to understand that a virus exists in other form. And before it becomes a virus in physical form, it starts with ways of thinking. Like those who have decided to, to eat bat and snakes and things raw, you know, et cetera, and have, you know, been contaminated by this we need education. We need to bring education to entire population. We need to touch the children. This is where we can change humanity by changing our youth, giving them knowledge, not just about, you know, becoming a, a good materialistic person, but becoming a good person, a good person. Thought. Simple as that. This is what we need to teach them. Then, of course, they will succeed in life. This is not, there's nothing wrong with money and becoming rich and doing great things. There's nothing wrong. But we need to develop uh, humans that are not just selfish and thinking about themselves. And they're going to be ready to do anything to be rich. You know, the materialistic tendencies and, 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 and attentions, that's what we need to teach. We need to teach to students. We need to teach to universities and, and college and, and kindergarten that we exist for only one thing. Not to become rich. We exist to develop qualities, to become first rich inside. And after, if we do things and if it's part of our destiny, we can have a lot of money. But if we are a good person, then we will participate to make this world better. And then things will improve. Not only governments can improve the life of people. A government is the mirror of the population. A government comes from people. So people needs to change. But we need to go in schools and we need to teach emotional intelligence. We need to teach them to see globally the world, to understand that we are all interconnected. Now we have internet. We have so many great tools at our disposal. We need not to envy also others. We need to do the best where we are, improve ourselves, improve the conditions of our population, of our country. That's what we need to do. And this is in process. Yes, this is in process. I'm not seeing just the negative aspects of humanity. I am not an apocalyptic person. I am here on earth with a mission to help people. And I'm part of this mission. And I want you, all of you, to be part of this. Whatever you do in life, you need to do the best you can. You need to bring the qualities in everything you do, in your temper, in your character, being gentle 
it is more difficult than to be any job, to do you know, any social title. It is very difficult to be gentle because we need to learn to transform negativity into positivity. We need to know how to argue positively when there's a problem instead of feeling frustrated. You know, someone is not nice with you and you are sometimes hundred times inside boiling with a negative poison that you just restrain because, you know, you don't want the police to arrest you. You know, we need to overcome that. We need to understand, okay, there's a problem. Instead of attacking, we will, I will try to find a solution with, you know, diplomacy, kindness, wisdom. So the plague, the name comes from the Latin pestis, meaning plague. The plague is a disease uh, common to humans and animals, affecting mainly uh, rodents. It is caused by uh, the Bacillus yersinia pestis. About 80 species of fleas are involved in its transmission. Bacillus is also responsible for less serious long diseases in certain small mammals and pets. So you see, we are not over. There will be probably a virus one day and every epidemi epidemiologist, every doctor that knows about epidemics, that I've studied that, that knows the constitutions of humans, they all say that one day there might be a big virus that we cannot stop. That is why every time a new virus at the level of the coronavirus arrives, of course, now science, scientists, they just alert and say, who? A few years back, the SARS could have been stronger than that. They didn't know. Now they begin to know even the coronavirus they know this will be Andal. It, it, it will be Andal because they have now statistics. They know that certain people can be treated, they can be healed. It's not everybody that is dying from this. So they will eventually find a solution. But let's say that one day there's half of the population that is dying. How can we avoid that? Of course, Maybe we will not be able to avoid it. But what we should learn to do now is to teach in all schools and to take these webinars and transfer these webinars to your friends. This is a free webinar. You can transfer this around the world. Put this on Facebook. We need to put this message out that the viruses are coming from inside from our way of thinking, from our behaviors, our emotions, our lack of humanity. And small viruses are creating problems. And when there's a big one, it's just a lesson for all of us to understand certain things, to understand certain things symbolically, to understand that, you know, we cannot be a snake, we cannot be a bat and with insecurities. We are ready to do anything in our thought, anything, anything. And we are doing this and, and we have the power of the snake at the same time. So the plague remains virulent for several days in, in a rotting organism. The germ is sensitive to heat and, and dissections. It does not resist sunlight for long, but it is resistant to cold. It has several virulence factors that allow it to survive in humans by using uh, nutrients from host cells and preventing uh, uh, phagocytosis and, and other uh, defenses mechanism. The tree humans related uh, uh, biovars variety would have corresponded to each of the three historical plague pandemics, Justinian, Black, and Chinese plague. The Black Death, 
you know, of, of 1347 and 52 because of the devastation it caused, especially in the Middle Ages, the Black Dead, you know, had a profound effect on Europe by eliminating 25% to 50% of its inhabitants. In the Kingdom of France, the population fell by 41%, or 7 million victims out of the 17 million French people at the time. So, however, however, several epidemics of unknown diseases with high mortality rates would be described as plague by the, the, the chroniclers of the time. By analogy, other diseases with high morbidity for other species uh, were also called plague, such as a fall plague, dog plague, and swine plague. Most of them have nothing to do with human plague. I dreamt about the coronavirus. Hmm. What is the meaning of this slide? I don't do this very often, but I will reveal to you a dream that I have received. Often I present dreams of others to help to understand the meaning. I have received a dream about the coronavirus. And it was very interesting, very interesting. I was seeing who can be affected by this virus. When the science, when, when the doctors and, and what, what the message is right now, it is fragile people can be affected by this. And the dream I received, before I read even this information in the news, I dreamed that there was two groups of people, one group on the left and one another group on, 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 the, on the right. And those who could be affected were those who have a lack of motivation. The energy of these people were more like, ah, ah. It was like this. And those who were like having a willpower, a strong energy were capable of transforming this virus. This was very interesting. This was a very simple dream. And I meditated a lot after receiving this dream, understanding the importance in life of willpower, of having an energy of wanting to exist, wanting to do things. When we are fragile, when we are, for example, an elder and we are always, you know, like in a mood where our energy is very low and always fragile and, and we take a, a lot of pills, but at the same time, we don't eat well, you know, we don't, you know, learn to open, you know, ourselves to knowledge, to have the possibility to to take care of our health. We just depend on the system. We just you know, want doctors to do our health, to create our health for us. We don't change our thoughts. We don't understand that, that we are more sick when we have also negative thoughts, emotions that are heavy, and we are not happy. In life, we don't create good things at work, for example. And often spiritual people are like this. It's very special. Sometimes I think materialistic people, they are more spiritual, they have more energy <laughs> than those who are spiritual and they, oh, they meditate, they are fragile. Oh, I have to go to work. Uh -huh. You're supposed to be altruistic. You're supposed to be spiritual helping others. You want to help and save humanity. And you are always tired to go to work. You don't see why you work, the meaning of work. We should never work for a company. We should always work to improve ourselves, to develop quality and use the work to become better. This is what work is all about. So this was quite interesting to understand this dream because it was really intense in a way where, yes, it's true, this virus 
will touch those who are more fragile, those who are unhappy with life or they have, you know, they have a lot of sadness, they have a lot of difficulties and, you know, and elders probably that have a lot of energy and they, they, and when you have a good energy, you make good choice. You will drink good juice, green juice, you will, you know, you, you will make action. Because we need to be solar in life, not just, you know, in an energy where we are only inside. We need to balance the polarities, the masculine and the feminine polarity. And we have both, as men and women, we have the masculine and the feminine polarity. As a man, I have feminine inside, masculine in manifestation. And in a woman, we'll have masculine energy inside and feminine in manifestation. We need both polarities. And receptivity is related to femininity. And emissivity is related to masculine energy. Emissive is, go, is having energy outside, making things to be in action, doing things. And receptivity is listening, understanding. We need both. First, we need receptivity to learn. Once we learn, then we become active. And both needs to be strong inside of us. This is why when we have depression, we have inside, in our receptivity, negative memories that creates viruses in our capacity to manifest. And the polarities are not creating energy, like in electricity. You need both to have a good energy. So doctors fight back against misinformation online because there's a lot of, you know, intense information right now that are not right, that are using things, creating, you know, a situation where, you know, people try to manipulate others and, and, and to use this, you know, with false news, et cetera, et cetera. And we need to be very careful about that. There's a lot of uh, conspiration theory, you know, you know, and we need to teach to the youth also. This is why the Plus Minus Code School Program is amazing to help the new generation to learn to discern. So this way they will not follow conspiration and conspirational news and, and conspiration theory easily. They will, you know, they will learn to go inside and analyze and discern well by evaluating things the right way. Why are we catching more diseases from animals? Because humans are still too animal. And everywhere around the world, we have shark businessmen, we have, you know, all kinds of things like this. We need to change them. We need to improve. And this is going to be possible if we go in schools, if we help the new generation, if we bring this message, I want you, I'm saying it again, I want you to communicate this, uh, you know, uh, webinar, because this is a subject that will help people not to panic and also to really relate to the facts also. So, and the conspiracy theory, you know, I have a question from India that just arrived. The, 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 the conspiracy theories, you know, he's asking, where is that coming from? This is because we now know more and more, you know? We have so many movies now about uh, uh, drama and, and, and secret service uh, uh, police movies and things like that. So, and we all want justice. We all work, you know, to find justice. And populations now, they understand this world interaction. They understand all this. And now they begin to think that, you know, there's always like, a, you know, a group of five rich people that are trying to control everything. This is not true. You know, this is not true. It, it is not five people, you know, every country, they have markets, they try to, you know, it's not as simple as that. Of course, there are rich people that they have a lot of power. 
definitely, yes. You know? So, but all these conspiracy theories, they come also from the fact that we are now perceiving more and more the multi dimensions of things. And we begin, more humans, to think deeper. And before, we used to believe everything. You know, this person was a, this person was a chief. Then, okay, he has a hat of a chief, he's a chief. You know, we see this in certain very, very poor country. You know, like, you know, so sometimes people are following the wrong leaders because, you know, they, they, they don't know. They don't think deep. They, they don't analyze who is that person. So now, because of more and more education in the world, so the populations are thinking deeper. You know, they begin to connect things. It's like you buy something, it comes from the fridge. Then before the fridge, it was in a truck, you know, uh, in a store. It was in your car <laughs> or, or, in your motor, or on your motorbike. Then it was in a store. Then it was before the distributor. Then it was before the farmers etc etc and even another distributor before the farmers so all this is now more and more opening the way of thinking everything so instead of taking just the first aspect then of course we know that certain negative things happen in the world so then we start to believe that everything is always like that this is how it starts it's because there's an expansion of intelligence in humans, in connecting the dots more and more and more. And because of that, then they think more with the news about the influence of this country on another country, and this other country has an influence on another country. And so this, before we didn't have that. There was no TV, no radio, no internet. If we go back 200 years ago or 100 years ago, it was a different way of thinking. People were more regional. Now we become to be international. And everyone is international. So everyone has his own idea about markets and about international, you know, trades and exchange and government's regulations and all kinds of things. So then they start to mix what they have seen in movies and what they have seen in life. And they try to see this and they become to believe in all kinds of things that people will generate through, you know, uh, uh, through populism. You know, it is populism. And if we have government officials that are watching this webinar, because I know there are some that are watching right now, I am telling you, you want to help your country to avoid populism, you need to bring a new education in the schools. Because populism will continue to grow and, 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 and uh, populations will sometimes choose anything and they will not vote properly because they don't have enough education about what is international. You are a government official. You know a lot of things. You know many things. But you need to understand. You need to understand that the, your population is becoming more and more aware of everything. But if they don't have the right education at young age, then they will start to believe any kind of things, any and wrong things that are even against what should be done in name of populism, in name of feeling part of a gang, of a group of people. And if you have anger in you, then you join those who have anger and you do a tribe of anger people. You know, this is what is happening. This is the global, you know, consciousness that is now entering in humans. And we need to teach them how to connect the dots, how to explain. And only we need to change education and education needs first to be a good person, a good citizen, and to develop qualities to improve yourself. You don't work for a company, you work to become a better person. And then these qualities 
will be shared in the company, for the company, and for your country. So we see, you know, that the, the, all th this is explaining all the pandemics, etc. So let me now, uh, because uh, the time is uh, is going fast. So there's a beautiful sharing of one of our uh, DSSI students, the DSSI training. For those who are new to this webinar today, it's a dream, sign, symbol, interpretation training that our foundation offers in many languages and in many countries now. And uh, so, so this is a beautiful sharing from her that I would like to, uh, to, uh, to read for you. So uh, the nightmare of China and the resonance to the rest of the world. And, and, and this is important to understand that it is not just the Chinese problem. It could have started elsewhere. That's why we need to have compassion. We need to connect the countries together. We need to help each other. That's where we are. And these are signs of that humanity needs to help, not to divide themselves. We cannot divide ourselves anymore because we exchange so much from one country to another. This is over. The economy has created global markets. And you cannot stop that. Of course, it's good to buy certain things that are local. Nothing wrong with that. But there's nothing wrong to help other countries when you think they are your friends, your family. It's just another way of thinking. Instead of thinking that your family is only in your country, one day you understand that your family, your brothers and sisters, are all the other countries. And it's not perfect. I know it's not perfect, less than perfect. But it is okay. We need to walk in this direction. We need to continue to walk in this direction and to improve communication because populations are traveling. Populations are knowing what's happening in many countries. They feel sometimes other countries are closer than their own country. This is so interesting. So you, UN coronavirus spreads throughout Asia and the world. 60 million people have been affected by the travel restrictions. It happened in the year end 2019 when people all over the world were ready for celebration of the new year. China goes into emergency mode as number of confirmed death was 80 and reached to over 2,700 cases uh, uh, got coronavirus. So, but remember this, China got into emergency mode when they have realized that this was very, very serious. You don't start a crisis right at the beginning, the first day, because you have one patient in an hospital. You wait, and then you start to see other people, what's happening, this, that, this. You analyze, then you bring doctors, scientists, you analyze, you do this. This is what they have done, and it's taking time. And this is normal. This is normal when you have a problem at home, you know, you do this, the same thing. You start to analyze yourself and then you begin to take proper action according to what you can do. So illness that could lead to death, not only for one person or a local area, but throughout the world. This new virus could be contagious for as many as 14 days before showing signs of infection. And that is the subtleties of this and and the specialties of this virus. Like the SARS, you were sick, you know, then you, you can see it. But this one is more and more subtle. So and on the other hand, I've seen the resonance to the world. It makes people concerned more about they are, uh, more about uh, they are what they eat, yes. More compassion to animals, find more healthy food to eat. This, you see, Evil is education. There are going to be more vegetarian, more vegan people because of this. It's amazing. Youth, you know, the young generations are changing. 26% of, uh, of Italians are now vegan. 26% of the population. You, you, sometimes you cannot believe that. It's the place of pasta and, and, and pizza. And of course, you know, and this is now changing. You see this emerging everywhere. Universities across France, they have the, the, 
Every Monday now is a vegan day at the cafeteria. This is changing now. And it's true that vegetarian diets can help the planet. There's too much animals, etc. Too much animals on the planet. They are eating our fields. You know, they are eating our, our, our crops, They're taking too much space. And, and we have a solution. Vegetarians is the future. Of course, people, you know, we should not be drastic with this. You know, you know, people can, can, can have their own food habit if they wish, etc. But this is a solution. This is a very good, healthy solution also. So, and so this is changing. And also the trading wild animals suspended in China makes a new beginning of food perceptions and behavior. And I'm sure the Chinese government will make some, some uh, educations and they will put in place some great uh, new regulations for wild animals. And these kinds of food habits linked to ancient traditions. You know, people in China will recognize the law of nature and not just of China, of the world, of the world, you know, may change their habit of hunting and eating wild animals. That collective energy creates strange virus. The, this virus has been brought to many countries in Asia, France, Australia, and us, threatening millions now of people's uh, lives. But remember, this is not just a Chinese problem. This is a world problem. This is a mentality. Because maybe some people don't eat snakes and bat in other countries but they can be like this in their mind. They can be snake energy in their business, thinking only about themselves, being so selfish, being, you know, in a mode of being, you know, like in a, a, a extreme capitalism. You know, this is a big problem, extreme capitalism in the world and, and right now. And we see a lot of things because of that happening in so many countries now. And this is what the new generation, they want, they want to change that. They want to change that. And I think it's great. This is a time where, you know, the environment is talking to us. Many things are talking to us to improve. So the world will coordinate to find a new vaccine to stop this virus as soon as possible and learn more about the law of resonance. We can't ignore other countries' problems. Human need love and care. And we could help to bring peace, harmony, and rejoicing together. Yes, this is very beautiful. And thank you. Thank you for, for this uh, beautiful, beautiful sharing. So it's been a great joy to, to present this special edition of the webinar. So every two weeks, for those who are joining for the first time, we do dream signs and symbol interpretation. You can even send your dream in advance if you wish to have an interpretation because it is the questions of the participants that become the subjects that we are analyzing to understand symbolic language and to understand that we do not learn only from dreams. We understand that life is also like a dream. We learn from everything in life. So uh, the DSSI training, Dream Sign Symbol Interpretation Training is offered by our foundation. Uh, in English, in India and Vietnam, and in French, in Canada and Europe. And if eventually other countries wish to uh, uh, organize this in their country, uh, this is possible. You can uh, write to us uh, at our foundation to discuss about uh, this uh, project that you would like to support. I would like to thank all the trustees also and volunteers that are helping our foundation around the world because this knowledge is now uh, being broadcast in, in so many language. And this is an honor for us uh, to help and to support uh, this mission uh, to bring symbolic language and the understanding of dream interpretation as a spiritual, as a, <coughs> to understand dream interpretation as a spiritual autonomy. This is what symbolic language can bring in our life. So thank you to all of you that are supporting uh, all these missions around the world that we have. And uh, we will be very happy, you know, unless 
unless the, 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 the plane decides not to land somewhere, we follow our mission and we will be with you soon in Asia. And with great confidence in destiny, in our life program, and with also the understanding that, uh, that uh, we cannot stop to exist when there is a problem. We are there to find solutions. We need to be logic. I am always saying this, you know, but uh, we will be there with great joy because we have a lot of lectures and a lot of missions to do uh, that are very important uh, in India and Vietnam and uh, which are going to be the two countries we will visit and probably also Japan also. So, so, uh, so the next uh, webinar will take place on February 24. Uh, and we can, you can have all information on the website of our foundation at ucm.center. Thank you to all of you. I wish you, uh, I wish you a good continuation and a profound reflection. What can I change? Do I have viruses inside of me? Think about that. Every time you are bothered by something or someone, it's because you are producing a virus. Mm -hmm.